Hello, epic viewers from around the multiverse. Prepare to indulge in experiencing sheer bliss because today another Riven Captain and Stellar unboxing video is about to be brought to fruition. What items will I be unboxing? What items will I be opening? Without further delay, without further procrastination, allow me to elicit the box. What items are encompassed inside this bulky, hefty, tangible, nifty box? Let's find out. I'm going to demystify the answer to that inquiry right here, right now, so bear with me. It will only take me billions of picoseconds to extract the items from the box and subsequently flaunt them in front of the camera for you to feast your glorious eyes on. Here we go. The unboxing process is about to commence. The unboxing process is officially underway. It has been expedited. What action figures have I drawn forth? That is an enigma. These figurines are known by the monikers of the Red Ninja Warriors. Are they stupendous? Are they stellar? Are they a paradigm of perfection? Are they the epitome of perfection? Are they the embodiment of resounding perfection? Let's find out. That is subjective. That is up to you to determine. You need to assess their merits. You need to determine whether these figurines warranted a discounted price or whether, the, or whether they should be relegated to the trash. That is up to you to determine based on your own volition and based on your own personal preferences. Objectively speaking, in my humble opinion, I believe that these figurines offer unprecedented value. Why do I say that? Well, these figurines may denote insipid mediocrity. Nonetheless, they still have tremendous merit because I procure them for slightly over a dollar each. You can't go wrong. When you receive action figures for dollar and six cents each that are five inches tall, that sounded uncanny. In other words, you really can't go wrong procuring five inch action figures for slightly over a dollar for slightly over a dollar each. Why do I say this? Most figurines cost at least ten dollars. The ten dollar figurines are typically four inches tall. Do they have better paint applications? Do they have better shadings and textures and sculpts than the one dollar figurines? They typically do. However, these figurines are slightly over one-tenth of the price than a $10 figurine. It all depends where you buy the figures from. Some states levy sales tax, others do not. If you buy a $10 figure online, then you'll pay a flat rate of $10, presuming the shipping is free. But if you buy a $1 figurine in the store or $10 figurine in a store, then you have to succumb to sales tax. But considering that these figurines are dollar and six cents each, you really can't go wrong. Now, my only gripes appertaining to these Red Ninja Warrior figurines, these Red Ninja Warrior action figures, is that they have screw holes embedded on their backs. Another issue is that their arms are a bit hollow. They lack diaphragm joints. They lack knee joints. They can't perform an ankle pivot. They can't perform an ab crunch. Their heads are not relegated to a disjoint. So their articulation is finite in multiple facets. That doesn't mean that they're abysmal by any means. They also lack peg holes, so they can't be mounted to a stand unless you manually insert apertures into their feet. I don't recommend nor advise doing that. But you may, if you are audacious and, you, and if you have the temerity to drill holes into your action figures, feast, then by all means do so. But just be wary when you do so. You don't want to compromise the integrity of your figurines. I love his wristbands. I love the fact that he can wield weapons. They come with a variety of weapons in this scenario, in this context. We, I received two katanas as well as, as well as two shuriken. I need to remove it from the packaging. It's pivotal that I do. I don't want to accidentally throw it out. But you really can't go wrong if you procure four ninjas for under five dollars that are five inches tall. He coincides eminently well with the five or six inch action figure collection. Why do I say this? Well, he looks menacing, he looks intimidating, he looks stoic. He's a diabolical ninja. Is he valiant? Is he heroic? I highly doubt it. He's cunning, conniving, and brutal. He's malicious. He has the facade of a warrior. Of course, his 
facial expressions are obscured by his mask. Does he have heart? Does he have audacity? Who knows? He has the temerity to charge into the fray of battle and decimate anyone within his vicinity. He's poised for battle. Brace yourself because another epic red ninja is about to be flaunted in front of the camera. I love his, I love his aesthetics. They're visually appealing. If you detest the color red, then this action figure may not appease you. Red is one of my favorite colors. Is red the quintessential color? No. Personally, I prefer the color green. I believe it supersedes all the other colors. But that's just one that's just one man's opinion. Your sentiments appertain to the best color schemes may be disparate from mine. You may loathe staring at red action figures. I love colors. Who wants the world to be bland and mundane? I want the world to be vibrant and colorful and lush and not weary or depressing or vapid. I want the world to be inundated with life rather than inundated with misery and tension and calamities. So they're all pretty much homogeneous to one another. They're kin to one another. I can't pinpoint any nuances amongst them. They're all pretty much akin to one another. Do you see subtle differences? I don't. I mean, some may be in slightly better condition than others, but they're pretty much doppelgangers. They're pretty much homogeneous. They're pretty much either each other's counterpart. And they're pretty much carbon copies of one another. I do have complaints that I would like to state. What are they, you may ask? I'm going to shed light upon them in billions of picoseconds. First off, their shuriken are a bit too small and thin. Why is this a salient issue, you may ask? Well, if you're going to package a weapon with figurines, it should be able to be equipped, but it cannot fit into his hand. He, can, he cannot clench them, so these shuriken are practically vendor trash. They have no pragmatic youth. What about their katanas? Can they be equipped? It's arduous and completely cumbersome. It's arduous and unequivocally cumbersome for him to clench the katanas since his fingers cannot be adjusted. The finger joints lack articulation. Nonetheless, if you are crafty, if you maneuver the katanas into the apertures between his fingers and you can equip them, you may want to solidify his grip by utilizing tape or glue or some other form of adhesive to ensure that they do not slip through his fingers. You do not want your ninjas to be disarmed. He's poised for combat. So here he is. Here's one ninja with the katanas equipped. He doesn't have any sheath with another issue. The handles are red as well. It could have at least been painted brown or another color. 
I would have preferred if there were more color variations associated with these figurines, but I really can't complain too much. I would have also preferred if there were plastic fill-ins embedded in the screw holes to cover them up. But like I said, I can't really complain too much. The figurine is somewhat hollow, but it's not the end of the world. Why? I mean, I only paid a dollar and six cents per figurine. Of course, a dollar is over a, is at least a hundred pennies. But um, even though I had to sacrifice a hundred and six pennies and relinquish ten dimes and six pennies per figurine, it's not um, the end of the world. These figurines trump the average $8 figurine, in my objective opinion. Why? They're taller. They actually come with accessories, even if the accessories are flimsy and shoddy. I'm really not going to tamper with the joints too much. I'm not going to mock up the joints. I'm not going to fiddle with the joints. I don't want them to become loosened. I don't want the integrity of the joints to become, to become compromised. So I'll desist from playing with these figurines, per se. But um, I also wanted to notify you that they have roughly seven points of articulation. They can rotate their head, they can ascend and descend their arms, they can bend at the elbows, albeit with very little discretion. They can also ascend their legs upwards or descend them downwards. They can move their arms nor their legs outwards or inwards. You cannot clench your legs together. You really don't want to dismember or sever their appendages, so I wouldn't tamper too much with them. I recollect procuring them via the Dollar Tree for a dollar and six cents each. I have no qualms about this purchase and decision. I'm gratified, I'm, I'm content, I'm buoyant, I'm jubilant. I'm all the above, right? This decision was not asinine, in my opinion. I love action figures. I'll add these figurines to my prodigious action figure collection. I relish taking a gander at them every day. Hopefully I can retain them in the coming years. I love these figurines. I can't say enough. Now if I paid ten dollars and my anger would be amplified. My thoughts appertaining to these figurines would be ex exacerbated, but since I only paid a dollar and six cents per figurine, I, I really can't complain. I need to reserve my complaints for another time. I need to forgo complaining in this context. I mean, when you pay a dollar for an item, how much can you expect out of it? These figurines have a pragmatic use because every time I stare at them, I become more content, I become more gratified. I become a happier, more optimistic person. Does this make sense? It makes sense in the context of my life. Maybe not to you. Maybe you don't derive gratification from staring at stupendous action figures. Maybe your gratification stems from another source. Maybe something else triggers your gratification. Maybe something else is a catalyst towards eliciting your gratification. But in the context of my life, based on my initial interests, I derive my gratification from viewing stellar action figures. By taking a quick gander at the action figures, it de-stresses me and allows me to become more content with the circumstances that have befallen upon me. We all experience calamitous situations, so we need to optimize our happiness and mitigate the repercussions of being stressed out as much as possible. So if you love action figures, if you love taking a gander at them every day, if you love unboxing them, if you want to add them to your if you want to add them to your prodigious action figure collection, then by all means procure action figures. You can purchase them via via the second hand market on eBay or Amazon. Just type in whatever your heart desires and see if it's available for sale. If it is, and if you believe that it vindicates the asking price and purchase it. If not, then defer your purchase and decision to another time. Maybe you'll be able to print them out in the future when 3D printers are mainstream. Who knows? The future's an enigma. The future's obscure. The future's an enigma. In every facet, the future is unforeseeable. I hope that you found this video to be enthralling and insightful. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. Goodbye.